three mere mortals discover their ability to create entire universes with their minds alone. Upon discovering their abilities, these three, mm, gods if you will, join forces to create the Dark and Stormy Nights, a supercharged team of creatives with the aim of helping artists and writers around the world while combating the forces of boredom and mundanity. They are the Dark and Stormy Nights. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, knights and ladies, it's the Dark and Stormy Nights, and this is Loki. This is Tyr. And Odin. And we're going to go into the second part of the Campbell story circle in a little while. <coughs> but first we're going to clear up some, I guess, some world building that we kind of came up with and we're still working through. I think a little bit of, like, um, streamlining the plot, you know, like, yeah, a little yeah. more detail. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, some of the stuff we came up with sounds much better than what we were initially set out Yeah, with. I think now that we know our characters a little bit more, well, it's kind of coming together a little better. I kind of like this idea of the, the villain, the big bad villain, a little better than what we started with, you mm -hmm. know. In the beginning, she sounded like an entitled brat. And now she sounds more like a formidable force. She might still be an entitled brat. Don't get me wrong. Right. But uh, now I like this. And she's technically less powerful than when we set out with her. But mm -hmm. so she's going to have to be more clever, maybe. You know, I've always I saw think her she's clever. definitely. Yeah, she's definitely a force to wreck to be to reckon with. Um, she's so we're saying she's what half or quarter. Unseely. Do we need to define? Is she going to explain so it? So she's only part unsealy. Part, yes. Let's go with and that. And by that we mean, well, you said she might be Fomorian. Well, okay. So basically we wanted to make her of, if for those who aren't familiar, there's Seely and Unseely, which I believe is a Scottish, it, may, it might be bigger than that, but to I know it's a Scottish convention of the summer and winter court. Some see it as good and evil or order and chaos, you know, however you want to look at it. Entropy and order, or mm -hmm. you know, st structure. Opposites. Yeah. So basically, here in Cleveland, we feel we're ruled by Winter Court because it's freaking Cleveland. It's the parallel we're on. Between that and the, you know, c local corruption and things like that, it's kind of hard to argue. Right. There's no sun here. We don't. We don't. Haven't seen it in, in years. And even when there is, it's not a. It's it's not it's not the kind of. That's not the sun you have on a beach. So it's 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 the really uncomfortable kind. I was speaking okay. metaphorically. There's no sun here. I'm thinking <laughs> one or two people for her. We didn't discuss this, but uh, if she's gonna be Fomorian, Fomorians are. Oh yeah, oh, and I was gonna you describe that. Explain for layman's giant please what right Fomorian is. So it, yeah, okay, so and we were originally gonna say uh, maybe dark elf, which is a Norse <laughs> mythology thing, and the Celtic parallel. I was thinking because we were talking about right. So we're going a little syncretic. We were yeah. Uh, we were which is to make we're several things together from religions multiple. or cultures as one. Right. Uh, so the Tuatha are a godhead of the Celtic people back in the day that were often equated with elves, but in you know so modern have, retro mythology, they're kind of like upper echelon powerful. M highly mystical elves. So in this world, though, they may be two, the, the two author may equate to the Seelie. Right. Uh, because they're the shiny, beautiful, perfect or, being. Or light elves. Right. The uh, Lyos of her. So in this case, we want to, s what would be a dark elf. So uh, uh, the, the, one of their major opponents was the Formorians. And the Formorians could be beautiful elves as well, but more often than not, were terrible. You know, Baylor of the Bayful Eye, uh, who who was like Cyclops of the X-Men. Yeah, oh, yes, I've, I've heard of that. I've read stories where they were part amphibian or part fish oh, yeah. or like all kinds of weird mutations. But not in a sexy ah. way, like entire Hideous. fish body, yeah. human legs. <laughs> no, no. Fish in a sexy way. I mean, you They're know, not all that. Not like, not they, like mermaids, Well, you've I seen guess. the way they gape their mouth when they're like struggling for breath. And, and uh, uh, we, we pull some of this out that. of, there's some like some 17th century Not paintings. like those sexy koi you're used mm. to. And, and they, <laughs> they, they look like some kind of like medieval conception of Lovecraftian nightmares. Okay, so... It's bizarre. Let's move on from that. I'm imagining either Letty from Fast and Furious. I do not recall. Um, uh, who? Do you have an actress name? I can't remember her name. 
Now, the other uh, person I, I was thinking I is Gina Serrano, and she <gasps> is... From Deadpool? Is that the one? Yes, she's also in The Mandalorian. Okay. And uh, I like her. She She's also I an like MMA fighter, she isn't she? Yes. Oh, my uh, gosh. She and she's my idea of a badass. So instead of the standard, everybody always goes for this very, you know, thin or... Oh, you're saying girl. not delicate. Yeah, no, she's tough. Like, she's got oh, you muscle. Think? Because elves are usually kind of like... Yeah, but this is no, a normal elf. Why are we at Mm-hmm. This what? is a Fomorian. However, these I are warriors. Oh. I do want to say, and I know we're talking about a female character in a different world, but I got to give props. Okay, uh, Hellboy Two. Their concept of a dark elf, or well, not dark, but an evil elf. Oh my god, the who? dude who was living in the sewers, spinning the spear around. That was a, an. What on, are we talking about? I missed it. Um, oh, it, Michelle it, Rodriguez was the other one. Yeah. Okay. I okay. was spe- I was speaking to like a moody dark elf like I've never seen it like so well captured in film is uh, like in Hellboy two that the prince uh, was swinging the spear around in the sewers mm-hmm. sure I love Hellboy I I think that was such a perfect on point well, representation I, I know I like the idea of a tough more muscular warrior female mm-hmm. instead of the standard like yeah we're trying to be hot though you know well that's like, what I'm saying though right I think a both Michelle Ma- Rodriguez and, and Gina Serrano are hot. So Oh, yeah, for and sure. And they're both tough. They both look like they can kick the shit out of me. I, I don't disagree <laughs> with you. I was just Which makes them a little hotter. I was just stating <laughs> is that you can be the wiry, leaf look and still be goth and moody and pull both off at the same time. I was just trying to say that as an example. I mean, Michelle of, Rodriguez is very thin. I mean, she's she's the right I've seen build, her bulk up, though. I've seen her get something like put some muscle on and it does you're, not I look think that you're, you're seeing her attitude in those movies, you uh, know? Nonetheless, like, I think like Gina Serrano is my first choice anyways. And yeah, I like her a lot. And I'll mind you that... She's not who I would think... I wouldn't picture her for that. That's elf. my point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead, of, don't feed into the stereotypes. Right. But these aren't the elves of later convention as other religious systems diminished the local mythology and they became shorter and smaller until they were invisible and several inches tall. These were human sized beings. Cookies. Well and let's not forget yeah. that, that <laughs> being in some way part from Orion, she's gonna have some power. You know what I'm saying? I dig it. We well, can that's always make you can the add light a level elves. grotesque. We can make the other side, you know, the thin light blonde hair like what you picture. You Would know? be more typical, yeah. Right. Yeah, they're they're aloof and they're assholes. Right, so. yes, cold. But just like a North Sealy and Unsealy, none of them are good guys. Y- you have right, the, right, yes, the gods marrying giants. There's uh, In the Celtic mythology, I believe there is intermarriage between them. I do believe there is people from the Fomorians who come over. Uh, one actually becomes a king for a while. Well, it, so if you synchron- syncretize, though, um, uh, Norse myth, right. wouldn't that be the Vanir and the Aesir? Uh, possibly, but I would actually probably see it closer with the Yountains. The giants? The giants? Because I was yeah. just thinking in the instance of, like, Freya, you know, joining the... Right, right. You know, the Aesir. And, Honestly... Know, <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of, of The Tuatha sound like the Veneer to me, and the Norse feel like they're just invaders. You know, they feel like a whole different religion. I've always... So I, I, I had the tried to write a story for Aesir a little while rather. that actually made the, the Aesir the bad guys. So... Well, it is a warlike band that where, uh, where the Veneer, where the... Uh, gods of stream and, and lake stream, and right. land, which is very much what the Tuatha are. So neither here nor there. Thank no. you for that little lesson in mythology. I don't know. I, I just I find this stuff deeply interesting. I don't know how much the audience we noticed. Will. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So yeah, no, I like the idea. I like the idea that she breaks the stereotypes. I like the idea that she is not your normal female. You no, know, I dig it. You know, your, your standard female choice. You know, I, I just I feel like we're just fed this line of bullshit. You know, I kind of want to see like a fight scene with her now, though. That's like, ep- yes. like epic, like the one between her and Colossus. You no, know, that's a fair <laughs> point, though, uh, which I don't not sure you intended to make. But um, consider the source. Are the giants ugly? Are the Fomorians ugly? Well, of course, they're the enemy. They're monstrous. Are but they? are they really right? It's just what the two Tuatha told us. You right, know, right, they right. Don't, they aren't necessarily. So, yeah, maybe the Fomorian are Well, good. anything that doesn't look like thin and beautiful and, you know, well, that's the light is well, I'm talking about the victors right in the history, but, you Right, know. right. That's what I'm saying. Like, to them, anything that's not like them is going to be looked down on because 
that's what they do. Sure, yeah. So, oh, we're all perfect, and our clothes are Versace, and our hair is very straight and white. So these muscle-bound, you right, know, right. warriors. No, I like it. I'm good with that image. So, Okay, so what were some of the other things we had come up with? So we just attacked that one thing. So we mentioned that she was um, half. Or part, part. Uh, we were thinking maybe a quarter because we're oh. talking about sequels and we're introducing other uh, Fomorians and the power scale and we're ramping up. Yeah, we're talking about escalating down the road. And so we wanted to be able to, to go into a situation where he ends up in deep shit if he ends up killing this person. Right. Um, and then getting even more tangled into the Fey world, which if you've read a lot of books about like Fey worlds and things like that then you know that any kind of bargaining with the fey is going to end up in disaster so i think that could end an interesting element to it um yeah it, unfortunately it, it was a lot of great development none of this is for this book so <laughs> we so we we place the the sealy and the unsealy in this world and where i think i personally think that the sorcerers or known as the combine mm -hmm end up being an intermediary uh, who's trying to keep out the more powerful of both sides. Right, because this is their territory, and I think that that's what our villain's problem is, in part, is Do that... Uh, okay, so her problem was technically that the, um, the Combine kind of made some unsavory choices back in the day and ended up releasing um, their epidemic that took out a lot of changelings and so she brings it back as like a political statement she raises them well however, that's what she's claimed right. is the reasoning however uh, the happy accident that would happen there that's probably not so much an accident is that should the combine go down there's a power vacuum that she would be happy to fill right so there's kind of an underlying motive there so let's let's be a little maybe clearer or fair here uh, in that this is what she's telling the Fae. She isn't going around and announcing this to everybody and maybe the you know the message being left behind I is this is what you did. I don't necessarily think that it's just the Fae. I think she's telling the magic community what the Combine has done by raising their mistakes and then saying it was the Fae this time. What's keeping it hap from happening to you next time? Right. I'm saying that she's not necessarily saying it directly herself. No, no. But no, not to necessarily. the Fae she might be. Because t this this smacks a lot of the propaganda you see of an ins insurgent war territory kind right. of thing, like you know, with the IRA, with the Irish back in the day. You know, like it's about religion, but really it's about land because you know, it, right, right, right. You territory. have an invading force right. occupying. And your, like, oh you know, well, you know, it was the Fae this time, but what happens when the werewolves population starts to right, right. explode? Are we gonna call them? Right, right, exactly. So really, she can have any supernatural race going uh what does happen you right. know but meanwhile we were talking about maybe having her infiltrate the hunters the bounty hunters correct because um i don't think that i've ever read a book where Faye were not really good with glamour so we talked about illusion maybe, magics yeah we talked about maybe having her kill one of the bounty hunters and then use an illusion, a glamour, to make herself I look like, like them. I feel like that's something we're going to have to do right off. We're going to have to maybe have that be like chapter two. Mm -hmm. oh that she God. kills this bounty hunter and takes her identity. I don't think you even need to show that. I think you have one interaction with um, Lee and the bounty hunter at the you know the Huntsman Hotel or Inn or whatever it is. And then next time something's off about her. But draw attention to that. Yeah, you made me like think about like weird, maybe but then like like hint at it but don't necessarily you don't even it out. have to though. Well I was thinking maybe like like she gives him dap, you know what I'm talking about, where they, they bump fists or whatever. Uh, as she's walking out and he's walking in, that's all there is to it, is nothing else. And next time he sees her, that doesn't happen. See like he yeah, goes like to it and she just walks right by him. Right right. She's colder, I right. think. I, I do not want to give away what show and on what streaming service. But something I've watched recently, which I enjoyed, has a spoiler, so I'm not going to go in great detail about what show on what service, but a character that from the beginning is introduced isn't who you think it is and follows much of what we're just talking about. And that revelation was so much better when you find out 
that this other character who had the ability to become other people and do things like that, that was revealed earlier on. And then when you find out that that character is the same character, that was much more, I don't know, interesting when it happened. I it, the so reveal is. <laughs> I know. I All feel right, like I, we just heard a verbal shell game. <laughs> All right. Basically, what I'm saying is there's a character who's known to be able to, you know, use something akin to the illusion magics, okay? Become other people. And then there's another character you see through the entire series who seems like just a character. And at one point, you find out that they're the same being. And that revelation was so much re- more rewarding because uh, the uh, Fomorian princess that we were talking about. So Finkel was Einhorn? <laughs> kind of, <laughs> yes. We demonstrate that she has this illusion magic. <laughs> she can change herself. She can do these things. But we never establish her as this other character. We just show the other character all the way through. So that way the reveal is that much more interesting. Yeah, I like that. I don't think that we should we should show her killing the bounty hunter. Don't I think tip your head. I think that you show one interaction between Lee and the bounty hunter originally where you see a different personality out of her. And then later, it's almost like he's wondering what he did to piss her off. Right. You know? Women are so fickle. I feel like maybe we should leave the clue, though. Like, okay, so they... Oh, yeah. You So the reader well, no, can no, feel no. smart if he gets so it. So we do that they fist bump or whatever like that, and she's I don't even out. necessarily know that it needs to be a fist bump, but she can acknowledge him in some well, way. Well, it's just a, such a subtle thing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But And then she walks out, and then later on he's leaving, and her car's still there. Or and even just uh She never stays here. Just yeah. uh, a teasing, you know? Hey, nice work, th- work with that werewolf asshole, you know? <laughs> like, something like that. And, like, you know, the one that he fucked up. Right. Um, you know, like, some sort of teasing or something. It and doesn't take much, especially yeah. for me. You know, like, I'm obsessed with story. I want to be a writer. I've watched a lot of TV. So whenever I see a sequence where the camera lingers just for half a second too long, or there's a character in being introduced, I'm like, why is this even a thing? And that's the point. Is all I immediately go, oh, I, you know. Yeah, all your reader needs to know is that this character is being pointed out for a reason. There's a reason this scene is in the book. Because if there wasn't a reason the scene was in the book, it would have been eliminated. Sure. Oh, this is foreshadowing. I see it. I see yeah, it right exactly. here. It's what the editor would cut out. Until she got to chapter and goes, oh, never mind. Uh, I just, uh, who was that? I was just uh, reading a thing where there's a scene about a fish or something like that, right, in this one movie. And Har- I kn- uh, all I remember is Harvey Weinstein is the one who wanted to cut the scene, right? Are you talking about Big Fish? No, no. Uh, and then there's uh, the director was like, oh, we can't cut the scene. It has significant meaning to me, you know, because it refers to my father and stuff like that. And later on, the director may have had nothing to do with that. He just did that to manipulate Harvey so he could keep the scene in. Oh. Okay. So it really does sound like that movie, though, but okay. <laughs> Why? Because it has a fish? Is yes. that what did it for and you? And it was a statue. Just the sheer fact that there was a fish did it for you. Oh, it's a big fish. No. There are other movies with fish. Fine. Are there really, though? There's been Branzino in every single Spider-Man movie. What is Branzino? It's a fish dish. Oh. I don't know why. I don't know how you know this. Why you know this? Because it drives me insane. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like the pineapple in every psych episode. I, I never watched psych, so I would That's great. You Except know, I started I, I picking up on that, but I didn't realize it was all of There's like a handful of episodes that don't have it, but I like, and that's why I try not to obsess over it, because I'm going to be like, where is it in one of the ones that doesn't have it? Uh, I was yeah, it's in most episodes. It probably got cut, but it was maybe, in there. Maybe, maybe. I was going to get a selfie dildo. <coughs> what? What? It's just a dildo you put in pictures to drive people crazy. Oh, that's hilarious. Like you just stick it to the mirror. <laughs> just, well, random places, Yeah. right? So, like, I, I'd seen something like this before where they had it in the fridge and they had the fridge open while they were taking a selfie. <laughs> and it was, like, hidden amongst <laughs> things. Or there's a ro- row of candles and there's a dildo hidden among the candles. I, is this, like, a joke That's on excellent. people who take, like, selfies in the bathroom but don't actually clean up the background? Oh, that'd be funny to have, like, a, a dildo just floating in the toilet like the girls who are too lazy to flush the toilet before they take a selfie. I was thinking have it stuck to the shower wall. <laughs> Why are we it. talking about this? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, Easter eggs. Oh, I don't feel like we need dildo Easter eggs in our okay. book, though. Okay, no, well, no, 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 but I something. I feel like perhaps we should go the opposite direction. We should have with something. That one. I'm glad there was vaginas? an actual thought there. No, not vaginas. Hmm, flashlights. Also, no. We'll be back in a little bit to discuss this. <laughs>
You know what I'd like to do on a dark and stormy night? Yeah, that's right. But right after that, I'd like to turn to my favorite podcast. We are happy to join you in your post-quarter bliss. Enjoy. Oh my. Okay, the verdict is in and they're telling me Actually, no fleshlights. I'm not allowed to put fleshlights in the story. So stay tuned for when I put fleshlights in the story anyways. Are you just trying to see how many times you can say fleshlight? Actually, I'm trying to get an endorsement. <laughs> we actually didn't discuss any of this. This is just Loki's bid <laughs> to put fleshlights in his story. So I could say it nine times. Because <laughs> I th- contractually obligated to... No, I'm kidding. They, they, I mean, didn't, they didn't sponsor me. If we're ever in Elliot's apartment, but it could be funny. We're open to it. If they did sponsor me... We can slip some fleshlights into the story. <laughs> we could, yes. Just don't microwave them. No, but I hear they're dishwasher safe. Microwave. Was yeah, this a factor? Yeah, I saw a thing where a guy thought it was canned meat and microwaved. Oh. And it, it looked like bad ham. <laughs> hmm. You think they would have some sort of insert warming pack like they do with like those those heating pads? I feel like the, the outer shell should just specifically say do not microwave on it or something. It looked like a ham, though. It really did. It looked like a ham. I don't know if I would want to be sexual with something with dire instructions and printed on it. I'm it's just like uh, you want to take the wrapping off and pretend that do- isn't what's happening. I don't know. So I don't know why we're discussing any I of this. I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> all right. Please all right, all move right, all right. on. Okay. Back to this uh, story circle, or are we still discussing the changes we've made? Uh, are there any more? I don't know that there are. A couple of minor things. We changed the motive. I think uh, we covered it, but we can mention it again. The original story circle was that he was uh, aiming for money to retire, and we changed his motive. We had already mentioned that um, he had a mortal wound, that he was saved by Nigel. Right. And had a debt to pay. So we just changed the motive from wanting the money to retire to wanting the money to pay off that debt. Right. He's buying his freedom. Well, I still think <coughs> retirement's part of it. It's just not the immediate. I mean, maybe down the road, but right now his his goal is his freedom. Sure. And it just makes the story a little bit st- ups the stakes a bit. Right. So, was there anything else? Is that no, it? No, I think we can go back to your circle. Okay, so last week we did the first, I guess, third of the story, right? Yeah, uh, yeah well, the thing is the story two. circles traditionally... So and eight parts, and this one's like in 17, but split into three acts. It, it's a little more specific. There's stuff that may or may not be in it, or maybe you need to think a little bit about how it defines it. I, I do like the specificity of it. I like that it gives you a little more to work with. However, these are all optional sure. when you get this well, they're granular. Not all optional, right. but uh, there's a lot well, of them that are optional. You know, the refusal to call, the mentor, so, all that stuff. So we're, we've left the, the departure, and we're now into the initiation, which is part two of the Campbell story yeah. circle and we're actually on segment six the road of trials now the thing is though with the first is that the thing yeah no you're right but <laughs> i was just i was just wanted a brief i was saying is that the first act pretty much could be covered in a few chapters the second act could take up two-thirds of the book it's long right. you know so it, like it, a satyr <laughs> Yes, we were discussing those off air as well. <laughs> Tear seems to think that they're hung. <laughs> and horny. Oh, I'm sure yeah. that's true. Every satyr is Ron Jeremy Goat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it's I just thought it would be funny. Hey, 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 baby. Should they make a trip to Faye? I'm just saying it would be funny to include one. Hey, baby. <laughs> Want to touch my horns? <laughs> I rest okay. my case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Odin's not too happy with us. No, no, I, it's fine. It's fine. I, I even enjoyed and do it off air, or like where we could go with it, but we're not at that step. No, aren't we? All right, fine. The road of trials. Continue. What do you want me to read them? All right. Sure, you're the. I got them on the all right. one huffing over here. The, oh Jesus. The Road of Trials is a series of tests that the hero must undergo to begin his transformation, to become a hero. So he has to fail a few times, and this is often done in threes, which I think is more just human psychology. Jokes tend to go this way. Everything seems to work this way. Um, 
he will eventually overcome, and when he does, then we're ready to move on to the next step. So this could also be a training montage scene as well. Love training montages. Or like some kind of scene where someone's trying to map a labyrinth, that kind of thing. Much less like those. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Um, The meeting of the goddess. This is where he might... um, well, wait a minute. So okay, wait. Explain th- what this is. Let's though. go back. The road of trials applies to Lee, or does it apply to Elliot? And how? Well, this really depends. And I'm of the firm opinion that a reader coming into the world needs to be shown through a, 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 an innocent's eyes to more likely absorb the uh, fish out of water to, to take in this information, this exposition. It to feel more natural, it, it makes more sense for me that Elliot is the hero. You might what? paint the you might paint Lee as the hero, but really he's the mentor. So you think that it's Elliot that needs to go through the road of trials, yeah. and not Lee? Well, Lee, Lee's already grown. Well, I think first off, he is the hero. No, first that's off, not true. They're I a think team, and they're Lee going through it together. Lee will have growth by the end of the book as well. Yeah, but that'd be like emotional, not being less of a crotchety I, I, asshole. Look. Yes, El- which Elliot, is still growth. Elliot can't be blamed for failing here. Okay. Sure. Elliot's a noob. Right. That's my I point. agree. So Lee is the problem. Well not problem. Okay, look. They're facing something really big and nasty. Okay. So them failing while they don't have all the info, I guess I don't think it needs to happen in threes though. Oh I, no, I think they fail twice and then come back and win. Yeah, I think three is drawing it out too much. So. It can be. It all depends on how you do it. Right. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same test over and over again. It could be three separate tests. I feel like he faces the changelings and ends up running away uh, to find out what's controlling the changelings or what's released the changelings. and Because they can't have got come out of the ground by themselves, right? It's not just So that. he has to know that. I, I think, I think, I think Elliot wants nothing to do with the changelings. I think they may defeat the majority of them. And that's when they learn it's not them. Well, that's know? the thing. It's just a shell. These aren't the monsters Bottom themselves. line, he can kill the changelings and they're going to get right back up because they're already dead. Well, the par- pieces will, yeah. Something has to have brought the... Th- I think Lee would know right away that just because it, changelings uh. are attacking everything, does it? Uh, th- you have to know right away that they're not the source. Something had d- to have raised them. It doesn't have to be straight up combat. It doesn't have to be that... Uh, black and white. It no, I think we start terrorizing the city with them. It could be the investigation well, itself. Th- he could follow bad th- clues. He might not have all the information he needs. Red herrings. So I think that he fails against the changelings and then he finds the Bodak and he needs to try to take that thing on. Right. So what I'm thinking is Sorcerer 1 dies, right? Bounty put on whatever's causing it, right? Mm-hmm. So whoever, they've got to figure out what's causing it, right? They, they Maybe he takes on the changelings before the bounty is placed just because he comes across them. Then the sorcerer dies and the bounty is placed on whatever raised the changelings. No? I, I just uh, You feel like the sorcerer needs to die before the changelings appear? Well, before we know what happened, you know, okay. and I think that's when we need a little investigation. But not only do I not think Lee would fight anything without getting paid. Uh, mm. well, no, I mean no, no. I wasn't protecting saying. protecting himself. Yeah, I was going to say, he's not fighting it like out of the goodness of, of his heart. I'm saying he encountered them, and they're like, hey, let's kill the bounty hunter. He fought for his own life, not because, Yeah. Not because you know, oh, it's my duty to take these out. No. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's a random encounter, though. They are hunting a sorcerer. I think they're hunting anybody associated with the combine, which would be Lee. I okay, it, it's it's. I don't think it makes an impact unless they kill a sorcerer. I don't think the combine. No, cares. no, I do think they need to kill a sorcerer. I agree with you. So the, I yeah, was just saying yeah, when. If you're some puny hunter and you get killed, it is what it is. Well, that's the other thing is that uh, half of this might be him arriving too late to stop the murder, and then eventually he's got to go. Okay, this person's oh, dead. This person's bad. dead. This person's dead. What's really going on here? That's part no, of the no, trial. No, but that's the truth, is that he could show up to take to after the changelings have already killed the sorcerer, and that's when he's fighting them. And basically, the sorcerer is already dead. He's technically lost that fight. 
Yeah, but that could she be the third one when he starts figuring it out. Like. I feel like that could be the first one before he even has knows what the Bodak is. But that's the point when he needs to no- find out what raised the changelings. I don't think anybody knows there's a problem until there's a sorcerer dead. The sorcerer is dead at this point. That's what I'm saying. That's nobody knows there's said. a problem until then. Bounty arises. Sorcerer killed, bounty happens. So you're saying he can't show up when the sorcerer is dead because the sorcerer has to be Not dead Not the before. first one. Before they knows there, there's a problem. He can show up to other sorcerers Second one, dying. you might be right. Okay. So first one's a throwaway. Nobody's there for that. Nobody even knows it happened. Suddenly it happened, and then Charlie doesn't show up for work today, and they're like, fuck, what's going on? Crystal ball, we know Charlie's dead. Shit. Bounty. Figure out what happened. But he's got a bunch of really small bite marks. And being that it was a sorcerer that, that bit it, they you know put a hefty I almost bounty. feel like they should die of the flu. Like it looks like they died of the flu because the changelings infect them. And that would never happen to like to a sorcerer, you know. No, obviously. You know, enchanted chicken soup, and you're good. You know. No, 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 no. Sorcerers can't die of the flu. That's what I'm saying. Is it looks like they died of the flu because it's not really. It's the change. It's magic. I'm not disagreeing with you. Well. That's what I'm saying, though. That's how they know it's a suspicious it death. It feels a little uncinema- uh, cinematic because what does someone dying from the flu look like? Sure, okay, they cast a spell, Lungs they divine it, and it goes, oh, it looks like the flu. But what if, what if we... Well, but it wasn't a flu, first off. It was an engineered virus initially. Right. And what and if it's like the Black Death where you actually see something yeah, on the yeah. skin? It, it, well, Do I'm that. not saying necessarily this seeing it. This flu could be anything we it's make it. It's just lungs full of blood or whatever, you know? Right, right, but I'm saying if we make a physical thing... Patechia. What if you had a pocket medicine. full of posies? <laughs> My point being is, is that I mean, I think there would be a calling card. She wants them to that's know what I'm saying. That something's what killing them. That's what I'm saying. Like so if you want to send a message, be something like that's that. what you send. Right. The exact same thing they yeah. use against the fake. Yeah, kids. they want them to know they're being hunted. This is a warning. This that is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a little more interesting. I like that. So yeah, no, I don't have a problem with that part. But they don't know until the first one's dead, and then the second, and then it's okay. Who's next? You know, and then. I think at first oh, it almost you know looks like a haunting as opposed to like a poltergeist. You know, you know what? What they tend to do in these detective stories, he's friends with somebody or he has a mentor or somebody he likes, and they call him over because they want to tell him something. There's some weird cryptic message like, oh, I got to talk to you. And he goes over there, and he's already dead and in the fountain and covered in bite marks or whatever, and he got that weird disease thing happening. You know? Well, the calling card, if the calling card is the, you know, we show him. This is the disease that you unleashed on the world, and, and this guy was killed for it. The next guy knows because he was involved in that. He knows he's next. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I feel like the whole group of them, a group of them was involved. So this is the inside people who engineered the virus. Well, I mean, yes, yes. yes. It, was a hun- yes. it was over 100 years ago. There might only be one or two of them. That are still alive. They're still alive. Or still no, I like the idea of them knowing that, okay, I was involved. But this is awfully reminiscent of what we did. So the first thing it does is he calls the bounty owner like, dude, I need some help. Come over here. Well, no, I think they put the bounty on. They put no, the bounty I think high. The second they give that them information. they see how guy number one died. That's what I'm saying. They're like, oh, shit. And yeah. then they put the bounty instantly. A we're, we're good bounty because they need this fixed now before they die. I, I don't disagree with that. But what I'm saying is he calls this particular bounty hunter <laughs> over his house because he wants to talk to him. Lee? And then yeah, here's Nobody my calls problem. Lee. That's my that's my problem is that we're making Lee have too many friends. He's an outsider. Nobody likes that's him. That's the problem. No, that's my point. They wouldn't call him. No, that's why they would. You you call an outsider when you n- want discretion. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You don't call like someone on the inside the who's got friends. The only people that Lee associates with, like he's a complete loner. He doesn't like people. The only people he associates with is Nigel. Okay. Then you guys can rearrange the story any way you want. But here's what the end goal I'm trying to achieve is. When you want the want him to show up and battle the Bodak, the best way to do that is to have him coincidentally there exactly when the timing needs to be. And why else would he be there? And I'm saying it's easier if why he Why would the Bodak be there? Because he's the no, next target. Okay, stop. I was already trying to s- cipher that for you. Okay. You don't need all that. It's Lee's the one who takes the bounty at first. Nobody sure. else wants this bounty. Okay. You know? Why wouldn't they? Um, my so. my point is, is this is a big dollar. Nobody knows what it is right off the bat. Okay. Uh, but what they do know is who's coming, who's going to hit, get hit next. When Lee takes the bounty, 
uh, his only course to investigate this is to go to the guy who's go who's the next target. How do they know wait, who's going to get next? The Why would they these targets that? aren't going to admit that they're targets. Right. But, Nobody would. But, but we can still kind of do both of your ideas. Number one is that it's not just these... Um, these sorcerers that need to be dying. It could be the reason that none of the bounty hunters want to take the jobs is because one the, the next guy in line after the first death called one of the bounty hunters in and he's like, you're my bodyguard now. So when they show up, both of them are dead, a hunter and the sorcerer. Whatever took both of them out has to be really formidable. That's why none of the bounty hunters want the job. This took down a sorcerer and a bounty hunter. Possibly too. I don't care how you want to do it. Okay. But that still plays your game into play here. Your whole have him show, have a bounty hunter show up and and whatever. And then also you can have it to where nobody else wants this job. So Lee's investigating because you know of the bounty itself. Now that what that was the first kill or second kill. How does Lee know that this is going down at that point in time? Lee doesn't need to know. All then why is he there? He's not there. Aftermath is that a sorcerer and a bounty hunter were both killed by whatever this is. Oh, I thought we were going to have him face off the Bodek right after the, they, they, those two die. Like, he shows up, like, right when they die. I thought that was the idea on the second kill. That's not necessarily the idea. Lee can investigate and find the Bodak through the changeling. Something okay, so maybe that'll be a third or later kill then. I, oh. don't think, I don't think the Bodak ever gets to the third kill. Do you think the... the How, why not? How else is he going to... I'm still... If we're at the second kill, and, you know, so the first one was before anybody knew anything. Second one, he calls a guy in to be his bounty hunter. Third one, Lee is still not on the trail. Well, you know he, what I'm saying? He like, why is clues Lee not on the, the second? trail what, what if there's changelings terrorizing the city? How the fuck would he know that? They killed both of them. You know what I'm saying? There's no witnesses you, left. Didn't you guys just say there's child-sized bite marks all over the bodies? I, I was saying that. What I does that tell me? A bunch of children, kids? children, and then there's creepy-ass kids all over. Well, Come may- on, A I plus mean, B. Maybe he's got like some kind of divining crystal on a necklace thing. You I know? don't think you need that. Really? There's creepy children terrorizing, undead children terrorizing the city. And oh my god, our dead sorcerers have child-sized bite they marks on them. Killed, How I don't know what that tells me, though. They killed two sorcerers <laughs> and nobody's seen anything. I mean... So you're saying that he's going to have problems connecting these children to a Bodak. Well, no, no, but like, where does where? he go? <laughs> yeah, that's like... How does he find them? Like, are they just... Are like they living in the sewer? Or like, Are the kids not terrorizing the city? They're all are over they? the place. Are they? Why, oh, I figured they why, went why are they hiding. terrorizing the city? We were talking about They're this. just killing the sorcerers. They're getting revenge. Yeah, but terrorizing the city doesn't get revenge. No, but bringing their deaths to the attention of all supernatural creatures does. Uh... I, uh, like I said, I think I think they know right off the bat what the crime was and who committed it because she makes sure that's what happened. Her, the Fae doesn't give a shit about these kids. What she cares about is getting word out that the Combine are the bad guys. Yeah, and for d- that to happen, doing it, the changelings need to be out in the street and be seen. Exposed. Yeah, no, you're both right. Like you don't want full on Godzilla, but too surgical, and nobody knows about it because the Combine yeah, will, right. exactly. will hide this. They will bury exactly. the story. Exactly. What's the point if it's just going to get buried again? Yeah. So what's a public place that all the Fae would gather around? You know, your werewolves, all the friendly whatevers that the I'm Combine let throughout live. throughout the city. If we have magic yeah, and mundane. Yeah, but don't they have a mall or some, some place have, where they can get together? We have magic and mundane mingling throughout, right? So there could be humans witnessing creepy-ass kids, but for all they know, they're just creepy kids. Oh, no. What we said is that uh, monsters tend to be cloaked by the, uh, the lights and stuff. Yes, so I don't the, think the humans can tell that they're undead elves. So they can do little Godzilla, a little bit, as long as we don't go over the top and collapse buildings. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I see it. I, um, what are you seeing? Uh, I see the the Fey underworld, uh, a bustle with freaking rumors about what's going on. Because Wait, you want him to cross into Fey? What? No, I'm saying that that she's exposing. Stuff, you know, she's like releasing information in the Fey Underworld about what's actually going on as the Combine might be trying to cover up that. Here. She wants, yes, she wants here there are, people you know, to know. There are people here from, I mean, we were saying that they walk among I'm us. I'm saying all supernatural. She wants to know what happened to these Fey kids and the Combine are evil. Right. So she's 
releasing it to them directly, I think. Well, then it, there, there has so to be several deaths. She can be pegged then. We She's need got like witnesses. Eight deaths or something before any real story happens. Because th- you have to like litter this out. For, and it has to be so obvious. Yeah, it's going like, to feel like a supernatural serial killer of sorcerers, maybe. Yeah, we have to go full on. Um, Oh, You're about to run out of sorcerers, then. How many do you want to have in involved the combine? in this? I yes, you guys said well, like two I or three were no, left. No, that's not even the problem. The problem, no, uh, the problem is how many are here. You know, I, I think they there might in be Cleveland? plenty of them, right, scattered <laughs> across the world. But why would you even live? Because this is in the world Cleveland? headquarters. You know, right? We can't <laughs> figure out why we live in Cleveland. Right. So why are they here? You They're know? not here. That's my point. The only thing I can imagine is maybe some of them are titans of industry, and they have some that specifically are based out of our town. So, <laughs> well, no, no, no. There's other ways to handle this. It doesn't all have to happen in Cleveland. There could be rumors of people disappearing all over. The story just happens to be here, and most of what the events unfold here. But it doesn't they have to be localized. Oh, no, maybe you're onto something. Wait a minute. No, what if the first one didn't? No, the kids Like died in Arizona here. or something. No, well, I don't care where it was. It could be in Pennsylvania they got one. Or Spain. You know what I'm saying? Who cares? And you it's know. just the guy knows that he's next because he's the next nearest one who was involved in, you know, massacring these kids. Okay, but you're putting a highlighter on the next victim in line. That makes the case too easy to solve. How do you mean? Protect one guy. You're done. Uh, we'll be back after a break. We're going to sort this out. <laughs> All right. Hey, dames and knights, Loki requires attention to survive. We feed him your likes and comments, so go show some love at the Dark and Stormy K1 on Twitter, the Dark and Stormy Nights.home.blog, or you can find us at Podbean, iTunes, or Google Play Music. Love me. Love me. Love. Go. And we're back, and apparently we didn't have everything flushed out as well as we thought we did. <laughs> and it causes arguments sometimes. Oh, well, it, it'll get worse when we actually get to I the th- chapters. I think, I think look, it w- <laughs> I don't think we're in a perfect place with it, but I think we've got some good workable compromises uh, or new ideas to replace the flawed old ones. So we are on to part seven of the uh, Campbell story circle. Right. So that's the meeting of the goddess. This is where uh, the hero gains items uh, given to him that will help him in the future. Uh, And basically, they're shopping. What did we say the place was? We wavered a little bit. We went from a wig shop to a wallpaper. I think we settled on wallpaper. Yeah, I think it's a wallpaper (laughs) store. I still like the wig shop, but whatever. Um, Wallpaper store with weird hours. You know, one of those uh, defunct right. shops that are, seem to be everywhere. That you only can't sells figure out why like they're open, why they exist. Style yeah, wallpaper. you've never seen anybody go in there, or you know, there's always like one car, and that's you, the employee. Like, if you did think about going in there, you get kind of near it, and you feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't go in there. Those like brown and gold flowered wallpapers. Yeah, it yeah, smells just, funny. Yeah, it's like <laughs> dusty and grimy, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, right. not that yeah. curious. Why is there like a tan grease on the windows? Lime green vinyl wallpaper. So right. So, but the wallpaper store itself may be on the up and up. Who knows? Probably for money laundering at the very least. <laughs> and the basement is where the magic happens. It is this oh, whole supernatural flea market. Yeah. It's some sort of illusion that they walk through. Right. I think. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. but they end up in the basement of this place, which seems to go on for the entirety of. Under this block, at the very least, if not more. Mm-hmm. And there's all kinds of goodies down here, I think, right? Like this, but why go here instead of the Huntsman? This is a little more black market. So yeah, well, gray. It's so like, I think the Huntsman is well aware that this exists. Well, okay, so the Huntsman sells stuff. They're just not saying That sanctioned. will <laughs> pass as mundane. You know, it might be a little overpowered and stuff like that. But what they're trying to do is keep the humans, the normies, if you will, from catching on that things aren't what they seem. The black market cares a little less about that. So you can get some fun stuff there. And I can't wait to come up with a few fun things that it might have. So hopefully we can kick that around a little bit. Do you want to move on to number eight, or do you have anything to add? No, no. Um, Woman is temptress. Now, this is anything that would sidetrack uh, a hero from completing the quest or at least delaying them while a critical part of the quest might happen. So if you could delay the hero for an hour when, you know, like 
a pivotal thing might happen, like you're going to go murder somebody or something and just completely derail everything. That's all you need to do. You don't need to, to take them to the poppy fields or to, uh, what was that, Castle Anthrax with all the yeah. 19 year old women knitting exciting underwear. You know, you don't need to delay them for eternity if an hour will do it, but it's anything that will just derail everything. Right. So in this case, we are having our villain, the real villain, uh, the one we've been dis- detracting from this whole time, sabotaging and delaying the people trying to stop this murder- murderous Bodek from killing off sorcerers. Through her persona that she's taken on, the bounty hunter. Right. So her the, the persona was... Reyna. One of the bounty hunters uh, that works for the Combine. Right. So this was, at one time, an actual bounty hunter that worked for the Combine. Not the girl who's playing her now. She killed the original Reyna and stole her identity. And then she's using a glamour or a charm. Glamour, right. And then now she is kind of doing what she can to sabotage the investigations. Right. Not just sabotage the investigations, but sabotage the hunters from catching the Bodex. So even if that includes like slashing a tire or something like that to to keep them from catching her. Oh damn, well we'll have to use my car. Whatever it is, you know. Right, but to properly f- uh fill out the step and all these are fairly optional. Um it shouldn't be so much as oppositional like in football someone's trying to tackle you from getting that point. It should be more a failing of the hero. So the f- the hero is gullible sure. or lustful and, and or something that falls into this trap. And Rena is charming them the whole time, right? Especially she's distracting Elliot and flirting with him and stuff, I, I'm assuming. So maybe she gives Lee and Elliot a false tip, and of course they're going to fall for it hook, line, and sinker, thinking right. that she's their old friend. Right, right, yeah. Lee thinks he can trust her, and Elliot's going to instantly trust anything with a nice set of boobs. See, yeah, I wonder about that, because I, th- I think Lee would be s- suspicious of anybody else Going she after doesn't bounty. necessarily have to send them on a goose chase going nowhere. She can send them to a trap full of changelings. It's not like sure. there's no job there. Sure. It's just that's not where the Bodak is. Okay, so from there is the Atonement with Father. Now, this is where uh, the hero uh, has a, a level of self-realization. Papa. Um, you know, he comes into his own and gets recognized for it. Uh, he might ha- Okay, so let's see. Uh, we were suggesting this might be the point where Elliot figures out that the changelings are under the control of the Bodak. So, yeah. And then um, Lee hands him a gun and goes, you know, like, congrats, welcome to the game. Good you job, know? kid. Yeah, so they yeah, they might be fighting, like, the, you know, one of the monsters, the Bodak has risen or something like that, uh, or the changeling children. I don't know. I thought maybe we were going to switch through a couple different things. But anyways, um, and... Yeah, they they realize that the thing, the undead thing they're fighting, is not what's in control. Well, Elliot realizes that it's the Bodek, like just out of sight or whatever. You know, he maybe sees it or, or figures it out. This might be like in the in the Matrix where Neo goes, and flexes and realizes he can stop the b- uh, bullets that he can flex the walls that the Matrix. He starts seeing the code. You know, this is that kind of moment. It's supposed to be every step built up to the realization of the hero. He may not have conquered or fought the great dragon or whatever, but he's ready. Yeah. Elliot's not quite that good, but... I I almost think that you could either do he figures out that the changelings are under control of the Bodak, or if he figures out that the Bodak is being controlled by something else. That there is a bigger villain. It, it does... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It does lead into the next step fine, I think, that if you just don't define that he realizes that Annalise is Reyna, I think that he realizes that the Bodak is also not the main villain. I think it could work either way. I think we're going to have to take some, it's going to take some work to set this up. Well. I think that once we start writing, we'll figure it out, you know, which which it is. Once we start writing, it'll come, it'll make it clearer. Right. But I think that it could be either of those scenarios. I'm saying we're going to need to lay out the clues and everything like yeah. that, so it, it makes good yeah. sense. Right, right. Uh, from there is apotheosis. So let's see. Uh... I love the word. I do too, but the definition's so heavy-handed. I'm trying to look for the layman end of it. It's deifying of something, really, I, or, or specifically, usually a person. Okay, this is true uh, understanding. So, the uh, the hero perceives 
the entire quest laid out in front of them, all, all of what's really going on. At this point, realistically, if we're following steps for to a T, Elliot should actually know that uh, Annalise, the part elven um, Fremorian being that's behind all of this, is also Reyna. You know, th- th- that's the level of understanding that is described by this. Right. He, he reali- Well, at the very least, he's going to realize that Reyna is not only not what she seems, but much more than it, and possibly behind the, or, and behind the entire Right, they realize they've the been time. betrayed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, once again, we're going to have to like, really, I think, work hard to set up the breadcrumbs for that, so it's easy, you know, it makes sense to put it I together. I think it'll flow once we're writing. Now, the next step is the ultimate boon. Now, this is like, okay, whatever you went to the underworld for, you wanted to steal fire from the gods, whatever. Now, this is that step. This is either circumventing or conquering the dragon. You've got the thing, and you're going to run with it. And the rest of it might have other combats and chase scenes and everything else that might come out of this. However, given this type of story, it would have to be defeating Annalise. I, I could see no other way of taking this step. I, I, I don't know if we want to take that step at this point. I agree. I mean, I don't think that Act 3 is really a huge, is a huge section of the book book you know like just because it's laid out this way uh, honestly Although so it much is like at the end of two when you much do have like the act uh, much like act one was easily wrapped up in between couple of chapters one and three chapters right i think the same is true of, of act, act three, three. Right. right uh so yeah the the major meat is the middle section yeah right here yeah so i agree with you that this is the takedown of our major villain um and then there's still a lot of emotion to come in act three it's just not necessarily going to be a lot of the book left. Well, and the I think, you know, because it says that the, the goal of the quest is complete or whatever. And so, yes, while that was taking down Annalise, that is also getting your debt forgiven technically. Right. You know, so. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I feel that's more B plot to, to the A plot of, you know, the, or what the... M- you know what I, I mean? feel like that gets resolved in so Act Three. Like, yes, that's technically true with the takedown of Annalise, but the r- the resolution is Act Three. That yeah, yeah. right. Well, and so also, I, I, it says the the purification of the hero, and I think two things happen here because we have two people involved, and one is that Elliot has basically evolved up to this point. You know, he has become something completely different than what he started. Sure. Maybe he has a lot more confidence. He's less of a coward. Smokes you know, less. Probably smokes less, yeah, especially with all the running, you know. <coughs> and then you have uh, Lee, who he was such a loner before, and now he actually kind of cares about Elliot. Maybe he drinks less. You know. <laughs> uh, and he would make a selfless act, you yeah. know. At this point, that that uh, makes him seem to again. I think I realize that's that leads in the next part, right, but resolution. once again, it's the 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 purification of the hero. Well, right. this is where, okay, I, I see what Loki's he saying. He cares. That's the difference. He's yeah. saying is right now things are going down, and he cares. But next act is where you get the resolution of right. that. Right. Like this is all the legwork that'll set up the emotional payoff. That when he does that, you'd be like, okay, that's in character. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And so so while you're not showing that here. The steps that would lead to such no, a thing makes sense. You do to some extent. Okay, so so the difference is that in the end of Act Two, this is this is basically your big fight in any story, right? It's yeah. the takedown of your villain. There's something big happening. So this is the part where if somebody's injured, you know, or you lose somebody or whatever, this is where your hero's going. No, that can't happen. This is where they're upset about it. Now, Act 3 is where that resolves, and either they come to terms with it, or they find some way to save them, or, or you know, like, some miracle happens, or whatever it is that happens in Act 3, like, to bring it around. But Act 2, like, when it's actually happening, you're still showing that emotional reaction. Right. You know what I'm saying? So th- it, that piece is still there. It just won't be resolved until the I think the we've got act. two great characters with a lot of growth to to do throughout the story. Mm-hmm. And uh, the villain, too, I think, a little bit will be interesting to see. I don't, I don't think they're going to evolve so much. I think they're going to be fairly static. But it'll be interesting to see that all unfold. It un- Yeah, it's a lot of unfolding. It's a lot of reveal. Right, yeah. So And I like that it doesn't happen until 
the end. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of lead up. And, well, if and, it's going to be a detective story, it kind of has to do that. Yeah, feeding you clues and ideas all along. Mm-hmm. And then some of those aren't, you know, are red herrings and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. some of them are like, yeah. And I, 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 it'll be interesting to see how, like, we can put this all together so that, you know, you're left guessing, oh, wait, is this true? Is that true? You know? Right. So maybe some conflicting information. Yeah, like, uh, for instance, the uh, virus that was engineered. If they don't tell the bounty hunter, and he's completely on the dark on that end, and he's got a lot to figure out, and when he does, it's going to be a bit of a betrayal. Right, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I think that, that all of them are, well, I don't think that Lee really trusts the Combine. Also, do we want to make it to where everybody the changelings bite gets infected with the same flu that killed them? Um, Only it's deadly to them? Well, I mean... I think that is that how everybody involved dies. I don't know. That's like what I, I kind of like that. I, know, I didn't really see that, but I yeah, know sure, that it's let's magic that. that is technically killing the people who killed them, these sorcerers. Right. But do we want to do it to the hunters too? Like, are they just taking out their vengeance on everybody? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. But it's the child venom. <laughs> it it doesn't bother me either way. I mean, it's it's magical revenge. No, I get that, but I mean, if it, yeah, if it's if it's Same falling zombie symptoms. rolls, sure, Basically, it's not truly the flu that's killing them because that was targeted. Sure, but it's, it's magic, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's more of a bubonic plague or whatever. Magic vent. <laughs> that's why I said the pocket full of hosies, you know, like as a calling card of, you know, this is right. what killed you. Yeah, it's too bad that that's from Europe. Like I it'd know. Be good if we had some kind of something like that. Terrible flu song. <laughs> <laughs> from that I don't know. Years. We probably have some Rocky Mountain fever something. I don't know. Some sort of like old, you know, wives tale about curing a flu or something, you know, like that would be. But I, I don't know any. Right. Well, the pocket full of posies thing was about. Is it you feed a crave? Feed a cold, starve a flu? Is it? What do you you want them the to like stuff chicken soup in the in yeah. the sorcerer's pocket? We found a <laughs> can of chicken soup up his ass. <laughs> 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 or or he has like a dry packet that you're supposed well, to put in like in boiling water. Like the flavor pack. Yeah, yeah, but he just keeps it at, <laughs> keeps it as a magical fetish in his, in his medicine there bag. There was one a Raymond flavor <laughs> pack. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I don't think those work for that. It's just flavoring. It doesn't have all like the vitamin C and everything. You know, it, it has that, uh, uh, oh, God, whatever they a call box, that. A box of tissues. <laughs> I am drawing a blank. When, when you take a sugar pill. Oh, the oh placebo, placebo effect. Yeah, it's a placebo effect. So he just keeps the packet on him for the magical, you know, and pretty sure belief r- in it. Ramen is killing you faster, not helping <laughs> you get better. <laughs> Who the hell has ramen chicken noodle? Well, you don't? No. It's Lipton. <laughs> What's like wrong Cam- with you? I like Campbell's, ironically, being that we're talking okay, about the Campbell's. So well, if you're going to get out of a can, think sure. this is going to work for the But who's going to carry a can? <laughs> So no can of chicken soup up the I, I feel like they maybe wouldn't do that, no. <laughs> what about flashlight? Still not the <laughs> flashlight either. <laughs> Good They're Lord. probably more likely to sponsor us Sweet. than anybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just remember us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hit us up. My email is always open. <laughs> okay. How are you going to explain this? The Dark and Stormy Night sponsored by Flashlight. Really? Really? Doesn't bother me in the least. I'll make it happen. <laughs> I am a whore. And then now every book we write has to have a flashlight in it from now on. What do you say, guys? Come on. <laughs> you can do this. You can make it happen. <laughs> you can always just paint in the background like a bad <laughs> selfie. And time for spanky time. Good Lord. Or we could maybe not do that. I'm just saying I can make it happen. We are good enough to do it. So. All right. Anything else to add? Uh, I mean... Not without moving on. Right, so we're going to do episodes. the return next episode. We're going to finish with, with part three of the story circle. Did you guys, are we going to do that thing with the cat human in the market? Did you guys want to go Oh, yeah. Uh, the Rakshasa. Yeah, yeah. I thought it'd be humorous if um, Elliot mistook it for a Khajiit. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if we can get away. If you guys know, hit us up. Let us know if we we're allowed to get away with it. That... He thinks that uh, a Rakshasa, which is an actual mythological creature, uh, a, a Indian mythology, a, a, a tiger demon, uh, he mistakes <laughs> it for a Khajiit from Skyrim, and he gets all excited. And he's like, "All right, are you from Skyrim?" <laughs> <laughs> or he pulls out like some pennies and dimes. I have coin. <laughs> Khajiit has wares. <laughs> 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 but uh, but no, I was gonna be like the Rakshasa is like, "You're a racist, <laughs> right?" <laughs> 
But I don't know if we can use it because, you know, he's like, are you from Skyrim? It's like, can we get away with it? I, I don't know, but it would be great if we could. So I'll have to do a little research or if anybody knows. Maybe we could be more Do you have to credit them it? or do you actually have to ask? I wonder. I, I, think I don't you have know. To ask. I've seen a lot of licensed stuff like used in books, so I don't, I'm not sure. I'm always confused by that. Like some people go, and he took a cola or a soda. And other people are like, and he grabbed a Pepsi. And I was like, how? How do you do that? I've seen, pe- yeah, I see people refer to like designer brands and everything. Yeah, I've heard people refer to songs. And songs, yeah. Uh, but and, I don't know and if some lyrics, lyrics, but not al- you know, you can't use a whole song, obviously. But I think you're allowed to, like a line or two or something. Oh, like that. okay. Well, if it's in print, uh, does it even follow the same rule? Yeah, I don't I know. It's it, the rules are so funny. So I, I don't mean, know. Not funny. I ha-ha. have also seen some uh, indie authors ri- like put at the beginning of their book like. This author recognizes the licensed brands of whatever, and they, they that they I've list seen, them. yeah, yeah. I mean, so. I'm okay with that, you know, because I don't know. I'm, uh, I think I was trying to say that the car is a specific like make. I think I said right. like a Toyota or something like right, that, right. you know. So yeah, wha- what else do you say? A shiny modern right. luxury car, a sedan, I mean, a sports vehicle, or, or do you, you make know? up a fictional car that like happens to rhyme with what you want? That's the thing is, I fe- I mean, look at Dresden. He specifically mentions his Beetle. So right. well, it's a yeah. historical one at that. And I hear right. Vol- I hear Volkswagen can be litigious at times, so it's funny that they really yeah. Oh my yeah, I mean. Well, his still runs. I think there are certain ones you specifically avoid, like Disney and stuff. Like I wouldn't touch that with right. a twenty foot pole. People yeah, but I know lawyers. Volkswagen wouldn't let the wouldn't let Bumblebee be a Volkswagen in the first uh, Transformers Ooh, movies. That was a mistake. Yeah, it was, <laughs> and that's why they didn't make it again. You know. Right. So, all right. Uh, so, anything else? Nope, I think I'm good. All right, so don't forget to go and follow us on Twitter at the Dark Stormy K One. Uh, and go check out our website, the Dark and Stormy Nights. dot com. Go listen to us on Podbean, Spotify, Google Play Music, iTunes, all the places. All the places. <laughs> or, or <is> <laughs> many YouTube, places. We can. You YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, there's YouTube. And we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs>